Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy, presented by Yamaha. Do I do anything special here? No. Just bring him to me. He looks like he's pretty tired. <laughs> I'm Captain Rick Murphy and welcome to Sportsman Adventures. And on today's adventure, I want to introduce you to a man who doesn't stand very tall, but in my book, he stands as tall as any man that I can ever have measured. I want to introduce you to Lance Benson. And Lance, when he catches a fish, he gets more excited than just about anybody I've ever met. I was born without legs for the last, you know, almost 40 years. So you learn things as you go and, you know, try to make the best with what you have. Lance has been an outdoorsman all of his life. And several years ago, he fell in love with the Everglades and shallow water light tackle fishing. You got him, Lance? Got him, Lance? Yeah, got him. Good job. Don't forget to bow when he jumps. Coming up. Oh, nice fish, Lance. Ah. You're doing good. Just stay connected. That's your job right now. It ain't going to be a two minute. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I this ain't a sprint. This is going to be a. It's going to take us a minute or two here. Don't forget about That's it. That's it. That's what I want to see. I want to see your little ass scooting down that yet. That's what I bow when you don't have legs. <laughs> Hey, I got to tell you though, since the first time I met you, I was so was so impressed at how you don't let something that you were born with, a disability that you were born with, you don't let that stand in the way of exactly what you're doing right now, and that's pulling on a 60 or 70 pound fish. And I got to tell you, I'm honored to be fishing with you, and more importantly, I'm proud of the fact that you, you know, take it and go with it. Well, I appreciate you having me out here today, Rick. I tell you, we're all born with our own talents and things that we have to uh, offer. And, you know, I think the key thing is not to uh, not let anything you have hold you back, you know? Yeah. Set your dreams high and go after them. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, Lance, just in case, <laughs> if he goes around the back of the boat or goes under the boat, remember this. That the line won't break if it's tight, if it's not tight. So like right now, he's acting like he was gonna go under the boat. We got lucky he didn't, but I'll use the trolling motor to overcome whatever he does to us, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Don't forget to bow, he's right there close. I bowed. I know, I, I was the, watching. I call it the arm bow, you know? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> Call out the arm bow. Hey, now let me ask you something. That rod, to me, looks like it's really short. It now, is. It, uh, you know, I have. Uh, is that the Lance Benson signature series? <laughs> <laughs> you know, part of trying to just adapt to fishing to meet my needs personally. One of the things that I did was, you know, have some rods made a little shorter because inherently my. Uh, <laughs> woo! <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Thanks for the bath, Bo. Appreciate hey, it. you know. <laughs> I figure we spend some close time together today. Go around to the right, if you don't mind. Go around to the right. Perfect. Oh. Pull right. That's it. Keep pulling. And just because I grab the leader, don't assume that it's going to be over oh, for no. him. You know? You know, you've done this enough. Oh. You saw that? He slapped me like my stepdad when I used to come home with bad grades, dog. I'm gonna tell you. So to your point earlier, Rick, yeah, I had some rods made a little shorter for me. You know, my hand's a little closer to the water than most. You know, most of the time I do this kind of fishing, I try to fish off of a Yeti cooler to get me up a little bit, but Go still. Go around the left. Go around the left. Ugh. You're good. 
Do I do anything special here? No. Let's bring him to me. He looks like he's pretty tired. <laughs> Back to you, bud. <laughs> you know, we don't lip gap these guys anymore because they're suction feeders. And we don't want to hurt them, you know? And I tell you, it can be challenging grabbing them by the, by the face oh, yeah. like this. Because they'll, you know, they start that shaking and pushing and everything. I mean, there's such a great natural resource to have here to for our kids and our kids' kids to enjoy, you know. Yeah. Come well, on, buddy. I think all those conservation here, measures Come uh, here. help out. Yeah. Nah, I got him. All right. I got him good down. <laughs> good job, Lance. All right. Get a little. Woo. I think I don't think he was happy to see me come down. Yeah. He's worried I might get close to him though. <laughs> what a great fish, a little 70, 75 pound fish. Wow, this thing is awesome. It really is. Beautiful awesome. fish. I don't want to pull him up out of the water because of that boat driving by. I tell you, for a lot of years we've been kind of protecting this place. And uh, that's one of the things we do is we don't we don't worry about trying to show off what's going here on here. You know? There you go. Okay, we'll give us a little head One shake. last bow. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, Robert is here on the way to the Everglades National Park. It's a family-run business. Uh, we've operated since I was six years old. It's been here 52 years. We have all kinds of rare, exotic tropical fruit that we grow ourselves. And then we have in-season and out-of-season vegetables and and stuff that we all use uh, in our households. We are a tropical fruit mecca here in South Florida. And uh, in the wintertime, we're the vegetable basket of the world. People keep coming back over and over simply because every time you come in, I tend to have something you've never seen before or something bigger than you've ever seen before. Uh, we hope that if you're here one time, you become a regular, and that's usually what happens. Hey, go. I'm Robert, and I am here, and my family. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Catch the latest at Rapala.com. Williamson for the Pelagic Playground. Maverick Boats. Fish the Legend. Minn Kota. Anywhere, anytime. Humminbird. Simply, clearly better. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all new F200, legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. taking you where the fish are, but now the silence is about to break. With the incredible new iPilot Link, your Minn Kota and Humminbird can communicate with each other, so you can hold on a spot like an electronic anchor, record and return to waypoints and paths, follow any Lake Master depth contour, and more, all automatically and all from your Humminbird or the Link remote. They talk, and you'll be speechless. Revolution continues. Faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers that launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records or time on the water with your family or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. 
You already know about the La Jolla Resort in Isla Morada, so let's talk about the La Jolla experience. With an on-site boat ramp, the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic is just minutes away. And when you return from fishing, there's barbecue pits to cook your catch while your family enjoys the pool or one of our new remodeled rooms. This historic resort, the La Jolla, is family owned and operated and has a friendly staff ready to make your La Jolla experience a really great one. Welcome back to Sportsman's Adventures and our special look at a very unique and inspiring man. Yeah, I've, I've been very blessed. I had, you know, parents growing up that supported me really on a, a myriad of different activities that I wanted to do, uh, ranging from, you know, being on the wrestling team in high school, you know, racing three and four wheel ATVs. Uh, I was in, involved with powerlifting at one point. Uh, I've done over 20 marathons using my skateboard in the last like seven years, and of course, you know, fishing. Lance, I'm glad I hooked this one on your rod. I want to see how this little <laughs> short rod works. It's pretty cool, man. It gives a new meaning to down and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Now, Lance, how long you've been fishing? I mean, I've been fishing really my whole life, but I uh, did mostly freshwater and bass fishing back when I was in the Carolinas, where I'm from, and then. Really got into saltwater flats fishing probably about uh, five years after I moved here. So it was, you know, I moved here in 97, probably in the early 2000s. I started uh, really getting the flats and tarpon, bone fishing, permit fishing, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I know when I met you, you were fishing with Eric Kurtstead. And uh, I just thought it was so cool to see you out here. You know, not letting anything in the world whatsoever bother you. You just figured out how to adapt all the flats fishing and sight fishing. What do you do? I know you fly fish, you fish with plug rods, you fish with spinning rods, you love fishing artificials. So what do you do? How do you get to where you can sight fish? Oh. <laughs> you see that one? I did. <laughs> Speaking of sight fish. Is there something that you do different? Because certainly sight fishing is a huge, having height, which is a challenge obviously for you. <laughs> exactly. You know? And I don't mean that in a cruel way or a mean way, it just, so I want you to tell me, how do you get up high enough to where you can really see? Well, you know, Rick, it's like anything else, you know, I was born without my legs, so all my life I've sort of been adapting to whatever situation I need to get around, whether it's my house, whether it's the hand controls of my car. For sight fishing, what I found to be, you know, pretty, successful from my perspective is you know we usually you know take a nice yeti cooler and put on top of a casting platform or we have a, a taller platform that i have that i use as well so i can really be elevated i'm still not uh, you know six foot tall on the platform but you know tall enough to see the fish and um you know have a little bit better uh sight fishing capacity so let me ask you this, is there anything that you feel like you can't do? I mean, what is the problem for you? Because when I'm seeing you up here in the boat and seeing you do your thing, I haven't seen anything that would seem to be something that you have to worry about or work around other than maybe the height issue. Yeah, that's it really. I mean, to, you know, my, as you know, my little uh, slogan that I've lived by since I was a wrestler in high school was, no legs, no problem. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, you know, nothing as it relates to my uh, disability gets in my way, and you know, we're we're all sort of created differently, regardless. You know, you might be shorter than somebody else, or run faster, or better in algebra, and you know, you all you have to take what you do well and do it really well, and take what you don't do so well and try to do better at it. You know, right. that's sort you of that's sort of that. life. You know, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if you have legs or you don't have legs or not. So now, let me ask you: This fish is getting pretty close to the boat. Do you want to grab this fish for me, or do you want to uh, yeah, let me yeah. hand the rod off? There's the gloves the, laying the on gloves the bottom. The gloves down here? Yeah, I'll, I'll grab them for you. I'll try to lay them right here for you. All right. And those orange gloves probably would work really well. All right. Now, this will be a good, perfect little fish. Once you get him, let me know, Lance, that you got a hold of him and you got control of him. All right. And then I will um, grab a DNA kit. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Yep, there yep. you go. 
He ain't gonna be happy when he gets grabbed. No, nobody usually is. That's it. I'm Perfect. learning. <laughs> You're learning. Yeah. Easy, easy, good. Try to grab him in that lower lip like a yep. bass. And once you grab him, grab him with two hands if you can oh, yeah. there, Lance. And just lock down on him. Lock down. Hold him. Get that other thumb in there. Great. Good job, Lance. All right. I'm going to grab a scotch bright out of here. We can get this DNA sample off of that fish. And he'll have you a hooked number. Him perfectly right inside of the mouth. Thanks to that BMC circle hook. Oh, oh maybe out of kits. How can that be? Oh, here's one. You're just catching too many tarpon. That's the problem. We caught them, <laughs> a bunch of them yesterday. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Okay, the hook out of them? Nope, the hook's right there, Rick. You want to grab it? Okay. Oh, that VMC was right in that hinge. See it right there? Oh, yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That VMC was right there in the corner. Bubba, I love you, <laughs> Mr. Tarpon. You have made my life. I'm Captain Rick Murphy and fishing throughout Florida, the fishing capital of the world is my passion. And there's nothing more fun than landing a Trophy Florida bass except releasing it. Florida Trophy Catch Program allows you to reward yourself for releasing a bass over eight pounds. Register now and go to trophycatchflorida.com and sign up. Read the rules, be sure to have a camera, a scale, and a ruler in your boat. And just registering makes you eligible for a drawing for a Phoenix bass boat. The next time you catch a bass over eight pounds in Florida, photograph it, release it, and get rewarded. And if there's a fish over 13 pounds, handle it like a rare jewel and call the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission to come certify it before you let it go. Reward yourself for releasing a bass over eight pounds anywhere in Florida, and you'll be helping the FWC ensure Florida is the bass fishing capital of the world today and tomorrow. Hold it right there. The Minn Kota Talon locks you onto a fishing spot with unmatched speed and stealth. And when Mother Nature tries to knock you off your mark, hit back with the strongest hold on the water. Talon, stand your ground. Hi, I lost a big fish earlier today. Wasn't using suffix. <laughs> it was uh, about this big. Look, slow down there, cowboy, okay? A fish in the lost of him, huh? You want your fish. Sorry, honey, that fish is gone. Always use the best line, suffix 832. Welcome to the Inner Circle. Rotating coverage up to 300 feet gives you a detailed 360 degree view of structure, contour changes, and fish. So you can see them before they see you. Introducing 360 imaging, only from Hummingbird. I got my first Yamaha in 1994 and I still use that outboard in the Bahamas today. This Yamaha 130 has over 2,000 hours on it and it sometimes sits for six months. I can always depend on it starting and performing like it did when it was new. Everybody knows Yamaha stakes their reputation on reliability and for me, that Yamaha 130 is living proof. So if you're considering a Yamaha, I can tell you that reliability and performance is something that you can count on for a long time. You know there's more to it than luck. There's fishing the right bait, the water temperature, the wind, the season, and then there's the boat. We'll put it simply, the boat matters. To own a contender is to own the best sport fishing boat on the market, period. 
Contender offers the most comprehensive model range with bigger, faster, and more fuel-efficient boats than the competition. There's only one choice for serious anglers. Contender Boats. Performance through innovation. The bow, bud. Good bow. Oh, excellent. I like that. It had right. some flair to it. Beautiful. <laughs> Now, Lance, I got to tell you, one of the things that's so neat about Fish Everglades National Park is that we are able to kind of catch a tarpon almost 12 months out of the year. If it's warm in December and January, we'll have tarpon in some of our bays, uh, you know, in in Whitewater Bay, Come in the boat. Broad River Bay. That's what's so neat is... This place, you could potentially catch a tarpon on any given year that, uh, you know, oh, that's 365, awesome. as long as you got the water temperature. Now, let me tell you what I like to see when I'm looking on the hummingbird as far as the water temperature goes. It's got to be 74 or better. They'll, you'll find them in 72. You'll find them in 73 but they won't bite. So anything over 74, certainly the magic number is, uh, you know, 76, 77. That's where I think it, it really gets good. Is, is uh, it ever too hot for tarpon, Rick? You know, I don't think so. We're here in the month of August and the water temperature right here is 87.1 and that's in the shade because we got a little cloud over us. But what you gotta remember, Lance, is this time of year, July and August, we get these afternoon thunderstorms like you have that one out in front of you. And I truly believe that as part of the peninsula and how the Everglades works and all the moisture and the, the uh, evaporation and everything that you get every day, when it would rain in the afternoon, that is the cooling of the land mass and it's the cooling of the water. One of the things when I used to really like the bonefish is in the summertime is bonefish early in the morning and then go late, you know, 6.30 and fish till 9 o'clock at night after a thunderstorm and it would be epic. Have a long lunch. Yes. <laughs> epic. Let's try to land him if you can on this side of the boat. Now remember, once I grab the leader, it doesn't mean of anything oh, other okay. than I've leadered the fish. So you stay with me on this, okay, bud? He's not quite ready. Look at that like footprint. A... Beautiful. He come off? Nope. Nope. All right. I saw that bobber hit the water and come back. That's the VMC circle hooks. They don't come off. No, they don't. That's that 7385. You know that tournament circle hook? And we're using actually an 80. Awesome. Well, I'm very impressed at how hard you can pull on a fish. Really impressed. Stu App would be proud, man. Pull, pull to your left. I used to tell people when I, really, when I want to get really down and dirty, I jump off the cooler. <laughs> <laughs> man, he is fighting hard. Yeah, let me tell you. That's a lot of pulling for a little fish. Yeah. You know? I'm impressed with how short that rod is, how well it works. Now, what's that rod rated for that Biscayne built you as far as pound test? What do you have on there? What type? I have a 40 pound Suffix 832 on here. Uh huh. So it's good between 20 and 60 pound braid. It's kind of what I like to use. And then we have a piece of 40 and then a piece of 60. You know, for these smaller fish, I don't need that 80. Come on, bud. Give me a little head shaker right there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get it out of you. I know it's, you got it in you. As soon as I grab your face, you're going to probably slap me. <laughs> I'll just grab you real hard. You, he just, you know what? I heard him say something. You know what he said, Lance? It's not Thursday night. What you doing out here <laughs> grabbing me in the face? Captain Rick, I thought I would be safe to eat that pinfish. Hey, at least you know one thing. Tarpon don't discriminate. They bite guys who, guys who don't have like hooks too, you know? <laughs> what a great little fish. Great little fish. All right, buddy. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. 
You're my man. Thank you so much for playing. Beautiful fish. And thank you for making this part of a sportsman's adventure. That's what I'm <laughs> talking about. <laughs> Good job, Mr. Poon. Do a little tap. A little, a little tail slap. Good job, Lance. Thanks for putting me on him. Hey, you're the man. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm really impressed. I'm so glad we did this. It's been a lot of fun. I would tell the person that's sitting here watching this show, so don't put any limits on yourself. If you want to get out and fish, enjoy the parks and the, the natural wildlife we have to offer, get out and do it. You know, there's, there's, there's a will, there's a way. I've watched Lance as an outdoorsman develop his career as well as an angling ability. In all his life, he's fished all over the Everglades, and I gotta tell you, to see him in shallow water light tackle fishing is really an honor. Check out the Sportsman's Adventures website at sportsmansadventures.com. Coming up next week on Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. You got great water. Look, Look at this gag. And you got great gag. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that now. He's a good one. There you go. That's what we came here for, the gag grouper. You didn't get away from me, dog. This is a beautiful fish. Sportsman's Adventures was brought to you by La Jolla Resort, a place for families and fishermen. Costa Del Mar, see what's out there. Trigger X, Trigger the Bite, Ameritrail, Custom Trailer Manufacturers, Contender Boats, Performance Through Innovation, Suffix Lines, the world's most hardcore fishing line, and VMC, your expert in hooks. Thank you.